All right, so we're continuing the tour downstairs now, and we've got this friendly critter. <laughs> I'm sure he's alone because of the kind nature of this fish, huh? He is probably one of the meanest fish in the house. She. She? Okay, yes. she. Silk plants, uh, good, uh, good call there. Uh, but yeah, so the black meanie, the Haitian cichlid, um, and uh, again, I already forgot it, the Haitiensis. Yeah. But very interesting fish. Reminds me of like the wolf fish, kind of from Orinoco Delta. But another kind of green terror, red terror, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> like, handful of a fish but very cool very cool and then in here you got yellow shrimps beautiful little shrimps wow that's a big one right there that's a big mama shrimp there well i'll let you guys check out the shrimps and some of the community tanks more in depth if you want through their channel definitely but she's got quite the colony thriving in here and we're going to come around into this room another all-star room here and this is really the showstopper, so we'll put it right in the middle of the video. But and again, with the tanks upstairs too, this is just, I mean, these are incredible discus. Just look at that. The color on these fish, these rainbow fish. Man, and these things are all just massive size. Because there's so much foliage in here. Yeah. Believe it or not, there's nine stirby cories in there that I never see. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, I see I see two. So there's one. Stirby cories are one of the most poisonous ones or venomous ones too. If you ever do bag them up. <laughs> but man, beautiful. I love the combo with the rainbow fish in here. Just and these man, these guys are the biggest I've seen. I love the yellow um uh, denison barbs that they have now too. Have you seen those the ones? The ones Dan's got? Yeah, those are called the uh, albino. Albino ones, yeah. And then they've got these beautiful uh, these barbs too here, which are, are these, the chair, is you say uh, gold, gold barbs? Barb, yeah. So and gold barb some with the pale face ones in there too. Some pale face and, and then pie, was it piebald? Is that the pattern yeah. on? There's a good one. Oh yeah, there we go. Of course, it's going to hide, but just really cool variety that I haven't seen uh, firsthand myself, but till now, really cool fish. They've got some of these piebald gold barbs, really nice. And these discus are clearly very well cared for the way they're all bagging and, and wanting, wanting something from me, but just beautiful coloration on there and giant size. Tiger turquoise is this one. Yeah. And the one right next to him is a blue diamond. Blue diamond. And this is a uh, leopard snake skin. And this one's got that nice, like, triple layer of pattern. And that one coming up to you is another leopard snake skin. Leopard snake skin there. And the little red one there's got a little story behind him. Oh, yeah? This one, there was a nice lady by the name of Nori. She was a about 75, 80 year old lady. And she had recently was selling her place, was going to move. Was it back to Florida or something? To be with her children, so she had to get rid of them. But there was two discus and they were really badly sick. That's how we ended up with this red one. Oh, wow, and you nursed it back? Yeah, that one made it, but his little buddy did it, unfortunately. But Wow, I mean, I know discus can be a handful when they get sick, too. That's cool. And of course, the two pigeon bloods are our yeah. company mascots. Yeah, the pigeon bloods are always beautiful. They've worked, that line has come a long way in in the last, what, you know, 10 or 15 years, it seems like. Just what I like about the pigeon bloods, I can tell when they're not feeling well, they'll start peppering yeah. and stuff. Yeah, they'll definitely, they're, they're kind of nice. I've got a couple nano fish that are like that. For me, it's, it's my ruby tetras that they'll turn light pink instead of uh, the bright red when, when they've got a water quality issue. So then we'll hop over to the mud skippers, which these guys are awesome. Of course, they have a very humid tank, so... Uh, forgive the uh, humidity but these guys have the beautiful blue fins and a really cool pattern on them too that let's see if we can catch some of that some of that under there just a neat fish there the missing link what's sitting over here staring at you think you got food oh yeah here we go we'll try to get over here these guys are all looking at me 
<laughs> they think you have food the and then they... The water is a little fuller than it usually is. Danny had a little mishap today. Ah, uh, okay. The tank. I had to drain. She had it is all this, the way up to here. Is this fully dry sometimes? This normally, this section is always dry. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And then you got the mangroves, the red, red mangroves? Red mangroves, yeah. Nice, yeah. Very cool, but again, you can see the patterns on these things. He's got some of the best uh, coloration I've seen on these in person. So really nice, really nice pedigree on these. Or you know, I don't know if it's just are are, are they first generation wild? I would assume probably. I would think so. Yeah. Yeah. I had to have them imported in from my local, well, my local stores, wet spot. Wet spot. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And then we have a really special fish here. Acalapia, how do you say the last part? Acalapia. Basically, these fish are so cool. In the wild, these fish live in parameters anywhere from 9.5 to 10 pH, and very, very... Uh, high TDS, then? Yeah, or? super high. So, probably Ethiopian rift cichlids, then. But in the wild, they go from, like I said... 9, 5 to 10, 5. 9, and 5 to 10, 5 pH. Temperature's up to 108 degrees or something. 108 degree top temperature. Now, how warm are you keeping them 90. here? 90. Okay. I, I don't want to, like, I, they're kind of nervous, but the male's really nice looking. I don't know why they, they normally don't act. You know what? I know what I'll do. It's pretty late, so, I mean, it could be that. But yeah, that's a really neat fish. I'm gonna let Ken come in and work his magic. Over here we've got some buffalo heads. Really cool. Uh, cichlids growing up quick. And uh, these ones, uh, oh, these are from Lawrence Kent, huh? Yep. I know him, he's one of my neighbors. Right on. Very cool. Lawrence is a very well respected uh, breeder. And then here we got some Shelleys. I think we'll hop back and look at the Sodalis or, or whatever their common name was on that. But you can see here a really cool Shelly tank. They got a 50, a 50 uh, low boy. And it almost looks like a frag tank in the way it's set up. But lots of cool color shells. Lots of good grazing film and algae and stuff for them. And then, you know, they were just present. Now they're all back in their little burrows. But you got to love the uh, near Lampologus simulus. They're always a cool fish. Really cool one. They, are they coming out at all over there for you yet? A little yet? bit. I don't know why. They're not normally skittish like this. I don't know what's going on. Then we got some of the uh, famous uh, Bentleys, Hawaiian blue Moscows, originally... Uh, uh, Luke Roebuck, I think, was the original breeder of those. Danny. And uh, they're a cool one. So, and then, uh, let's see, what do we got in here again? These are, oh, shrimp, right. These are the orange ones. We got a nice pregnant female right there. Big old orange pumpkin shrimp. And then here we got some of the Lucas Bretts. These, look, this one has a nice split tail, too. Fire and ice. These are the fire and ice. I had some of the, I had some of the fire, but never the ice. I guess <laughs> I had the yellow ones, but never none of the white ones that I had hoped for ever came from mine. Lucas gets some pretty wild. He, yeah, he, he gets some pretty cool ones. Lucas Bretts is where they got those. You guys have some fish from some pretty cool sources. That yeah. is for sure. That's the one of the nice things about YouTube, you meet some cool folks. Yeah, you there definitely. Definitely. So here are those Rift Lake cichlids that hang out in the Ethiopian water, I would guess. I might be wrong, but double check that. Oh, there's the male. Yeah, he's got some nice color to him. But definitely, i got to learn more about these. They're, they're fascinating. Yeah, the next size are about like this. Is all. Okay, so they only get maybe double this size. The size of a full size crick, maybe. Okay, yeah, but really cool fish. Um, def, I mean, bordering on like a extremophile, I'd call them. You know, that's like a <laughs> hot spring almost. The only wow. thing I've witnessed 
close to that as those cichlid or those. Uh, you're on. You're on the hot seat oh, okay. now. When we went to Father Fisher, we collected those sail fins. Oh yeah. We collected them out of a, basically a, like a spring. Oh. So it was like 98 degree water. Wow. I mean, super super salt, and I mean. It yeah. Was, yeah. Ed's actually converted up for He's sending some back to me now. Oh, cool. Been, you know, the babies are full fresh water. Yeah. Anxious to get those a little yeah. cool little wild green. Yeah. Molly in. I got to do one more little drive by on this tank just because it's so pretty. Everybody that comes here does. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice one. I mean, it's hard to even like show how big the crypts are you know they're like bigger than your hands yeah and these fish are just ginormous too i mean so like dinner plate <laughs> and these guys you've got enough of these barbs the denison barbs or denisone i don't know however you want to say it but that they move in really interesting ways kind of like sharks really i mean i know they do call some people do call them some sort of shark rainbow shark they also call the black you know orange ones rainbow sharks too but um really beautiful fish and cool to see moving i'd love to see now that i've seen these i'd love to see like 50 in like a 500 oh, you know fully grown would be really something else what i wanted to do and i might still do down the road is i would like to get some of those other ones that dan's got the the, the yellow oh, bright yellow yeah, ones so yeah pretty. for sure well, let's make our way to maybe the big boy room, you think? Or should we hit the other one first? You're, you're the man with the camera. All right, let's, let's make a stop in here first, and then we'll finish off with the, the big old ones. But these are uh, exodons. Yes. And is the, do you know where they're from at all? Like, they're uh, in the Amazon, I okay. believe. I think they're in the same waters as like the piranhas and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. But super cool. You got a lot of them in here, too. Yeah, we, we got these from a guy named Jesse. Um, I shot his fish room with Jesse Jacobson. He's up in Vancouver. Oh, cool. Yeah. And, uh, I, okay, I know who he is. Yeah. Yeah. That guy had a sick, sick... But he, he had another project come up that he needed the tank space, so he donated these. Wow. They're really cool. Were they smaller when you got them, or they were about that the big? Size. I think that's about full grown too. And is this what a seventy-five gallon? That's a. I think that's a sixty. Sixty. Okay. Oh yeah, it's not quite as deep, huh? And then we got all sorts of beautiful little uh, guppies in here, Dumbo ears and metallic and rainbow. I don't even know what they are. They're just ginormously thin, though. That's otherworldly from anything existed years Those ago. Are the bigger ones with the bigger tails are the red mosaic dumbos. Red mosaic dumbo, okay. And then the other ones are red bluegrass, the, the smaller ones in there with the red on them. The red bluegrass are really pretty. And it's always hard, you can never convey the iridescence and the shimmer on them in a, in a video or picture, but they are really cool. And then uh, in here we got some more Bloody Mary Neocaridina shrimp. And some green water. You need green water to breed. If uh, if you guys don't know that trick yet, you definitely need Believe that. Believe it or not, the reason we've got that there is because we got Daphne and Kelser starting to grow all over in a bunch oh, of Oh, yeah, things. yeah. So I'm, I want the green water to feed, feed them. them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And then, so if you could tell me one more time the story on these guys. These They're are really uh, interesting. long, thin, rosy barbs. Uh, They're just ginormous, too. Katie and I... Basically, when we used to live in Hawaii for three years, uh, as a marine, I started breeding these. So anyway, we got well known on the island for our rosy barbs. And I was talking to Jesse with H.C. Aqua, and I wanted to see if maybe my, my lines were still living there. And looking at that male, I think it's pretty close to what we used to do. I don't know. Yeah. But the only thing since I've been in Oregon and I've been trying to breathe these out. I've had trouble. As you guys can see, they're getting really, really big. Yeah, real big I can't belly. I get these females to throw their eggs. So I think we're going to probably most likely go to one of my friends that has the super soft water. Mm -hmm. And just let them have some fun with them. and See what happens kind of thing. Get them breeding, yeah. Just those very females, cool. a couple of them are starting to worry me really bad now. Yeah, they could be egg. That, yeah, that one definitely looks egg bound. Yeah. I mean, I'm almost to the point where I take a syringe and see if I can get it out. I know. I've, 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 I've done that a few times, or a scalpel really carefully. Um, or, scalpel, I don't, I, I'm thinking like just a little little uh, eyedropper type thing. 
Yeah, yeah. Good sock and the, it depends on the size of the fish. Some people will do a little incision and then stitch it back up if it's a big enough fish. And then some people will use like yeah eye drop or some people will just press a little bit. But you can injure them pretty easily yeah, if you do that. But I'm gonna have to do something soon because I'm not digging what I'm seeing there. Yeah, there's a lot of the females too. So I mean, at least you'd find out you know what could help one of them if if you you know had to get some help with that. And then over here, I like these guys too. The, obviously, the pandagars are always a fun one, but the, these little lamias are really cool too. They're, these are, um, would you say, humpback. Hunch, humpback? Okay, I was gonna say hunchback, but humpback, yeah. And that little guy is gonna mess with you. He did it to me yesterday. I was making a video. That is a little photo bombing. Little, <laughs> yeah, he uh, wants to he's be. He's so pretty though. We got these from our good friends. Uh, Andrew and Ashley, they own uh, the aquascaping place. Yeah, yeah. Pisces Aquaria, I think it's called down in uh, very the Eugene cool. area. Very cool store. And then we've got another big old guppy tank here in like guppy paradise. Exactly what they'd that want in the one's wild. Kind of a funny deal. We had, if you look at this rack over here, we have panda guppies up the front. Right. Are these blue and or purple blue. pandas? Blue. Blue. Okay. Yeah. Or actually, I think they're. Those might be purple, I can't remember. But anyway, as you can see, we, down here we had our Vienna guppies. Oh, well, yeah. Somehow a couple of males hopped out of this tank and ended up there. We yeah. didn't catch it. Yeah, I've had so that they same up thing our happen. we got to start over on the Viennas now. <laughs> I've had the same thing happen, yeah. And then those are more Turconas from upstairs in the bathroom. Yeah, more Turconas. Cool. And those are the ones that got to move out by 18 or they're in trouble. There are, these are all, what we'll probably do is, the problem is, is... I can't put these parents in with other parents either because they'll kill each other. So right, yeah. Then we got to make sure we put them in tanks where they can't right. get destroyed. And so we'll kind of wrap it up here. But again, I'm just barely skimming what they have in these tanks. So check out the top 100 fish they're counting down. I mean, they've got everything from, obviously, we've got the Fajaca Puffer here. Really cool. And we got the... Giant Danios as dithers in there. Okay, so those are giant ones. I wasn't sure if they were pearl or giant or the hill those stream. Those things are so cool. Man. Yeah, they are. When, especially when you got a larger school, it does that fish of justice. Yeah. Well, speaking of large fish <laughs> getting their justice to, man, these hatchet fish, these giant hatchet fish are rad. Yeah, I was so stoked when I saw those, man. These are, again, hand sized fish. Uh, just cruising around look at yeah, that black the silver dollars seem to school together quite often and that's great because you know sometimes people have trouble with silver dollars but yours are so healthy they've got the nice red rosy hump on them with the uh you know starlight flex of or, yeah, or are, that one right there believe it or not it's 15 he'll be 15 years old this year wow 15 year old i got so. him from and i, I hate talking that gets me almost tearing up but this <laughs> gentleman called me just frantic he was basically going through major brain surgery. He had cancer in his brain. Oh, man. And, you know, by all rights, he had enough on his plate for himself. All he cared about is that this, he had those and a couple of uh, black skirted tetras. He just wanted his fish to be safe. Man. He called me up and said, would you help? What can you do? I mean, yeah, you gotta. Oh, I felt so bad, man. Now, okay, so again, what was this cichlid here? That is a female. Uh, Salvini Rio Candelaria with the Dr. Rusty. That is a beautiful fish. We've read right those out probably four times. Unfortunately, I had her mate over in this African tank over here because I needed uh, space for something else. Yeah. And the big moda in there killed them. Wow. I mean, that is a beautiful fish, though. Really cool. And then over in here, we got some more guppies. Real pretty one. These are the Dumbo Red Mosaics. Got some blue and some yellow with some blue also, which is pretty cool. Big females. Females have colorful tails. For guppy lovers, these are also beautiful from above. A lot of people in Hawaii have been keeping the Dumbo varieties. Well, tropical places in general, they make great pond fish. Keep the mosquitoes well, away. On that side, there's something that everybody misses when they're in there. There's giant Raphael cats in here, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah. It's a good There's size like one. Four of them that size in there, and then I've got one medium sized spotted Raphael in there. I caught one earlier, too, come to think of it, but man, yeah, they're not out for the, the filming out right now. No, but those guys, 
you have, you have to be here at like two hours after I turn off the lights. And again, so I have to, I forgot already, but the yellow, the beautiful yellow lined. Yeah, that's a blue. Venustis. Venustis. And this big beautiful one here is a VC-10. VC-10. Is that some sort of bombing plane? <laughs> yeah, that's a cool one. And that's the female Venustis. This, this tank is rather disappointing. Wow. I had a lot of old fish. Oh, yeah, real disappointing, Ken. What a bummer of a tank. You would have seen what it normally would be. I mean, I Just, lost all my dragon bloods. And these that, are incredible I've got this fish. fire fisher. I am going to start breeding these again. I've got a female yeah. upstairs. That's, they got such... This light's not doing them justice, but they got a lot of blues and reds. Sure. I bet natural light, they just light up. They're awesome. Really cool. Another Chircana. Oh, and there's another good shot for you, Alex. He's out yeah. Oh, front. nice. Yeah, I'll have to sneak. Those guys are hard to come by when you can get a shot like that. I wish the tank didn't have so much green on it for you, but... It's all good. Yeah, he's going to hang for you. Beautiful. The electric blue of cars we've done. Then I was talking about that. The big uh, Royal oh, Pleco. Oh, yeah. For you. Man, that Royal Pleco is. I know there's some stuff in the way, but man, you guys, this is a full grown, near full grown, if not totally full grown. Nice old age. With they're the, still one of my favorite Plecos. I think they're cool. Yeah, they're an awesome one. They're, those in the watermelon ones that kind of look similar are really cool. And then but, here at Danica, we just don't keep exotics. As you guys can see, I got a rainbow shark in there <laughs> and a red tail shark in the tank next to it. And yeah, that's why I you still don't like the old classics. That's why you don't buy these at Petco for four ninety nine and put them in your ten gallon though. Nope, they grow quick. They get eight inches long or whatever. So, and then we've got angels too. So, Boys. no discriminating on uh, if it's common or if it's uh, rare. We've got all sorts of fish here and again I mean this is what the 10th tank that's bigger than anything I have so just I mean it's a dream come true for me to get to check out places like this thank you so much for having me uh, oh, Ken so and welcome, Danny man. too I mean you guys thank you so again where can they check you out DanikinAquatics.com. We're All at right. Danikin or excuse me Danikin Aquatics is not up yet but we're <laughs> on YouTube Danikin Aquatics we're on uh, Instagram and Facebook, Great. Aquatics. Yeah, so. and they definitely have a presence with live streams if you have questions, and uh, they're just yeah, we really... Yeah, stream every Friday night at 7.30 right after Lucas Bretz. Right on. And that's uh, 10.30 Eastern, and then Sunday, 6 p.m. Pacific, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Right on, and it's, again, like I said, husband and wife team working on all this, and just really good-natured really kind people inviting me over and making me feel right at home so thank you again and just i mean every room in this place is incredible labor of love so thank you for showing me all this we appreciate you Incre coming. incredible stuff all right well that's going to wrap up this tour and that's keeping it so abridged i mean it, it doesn't do the fish justice whatsoever so you, like i said a million times you need to come back and check out their actual channel to learn more right about... Right now we are doing the Danikin Top 100 Fish of the Fish Room. 100 Top Fish getting counted down right now on the channel. So you'll get more background on each of these if you want to check it out. All right. Thanks, guys. Uh, if you want, like, subscribe if I earned it. If not, I'll see you next time. And then you need to like and subscribe if you made it to next time and you still haven't done it. But otherwise, uh, have a good one. Take care, and I'll see you later.